All right, uh, welcome class. Uh... Welcome class. Today we are going to learn about the vertex. <laughs> uh, today we're going to learn about the vertex form of a quadratic. It's my favorite form. It's the best form. And this video is just going to talk about um, finding the vertex. Not graphing it, just finding the vertex. And, I mean, it's called vertex form. Like, the word is in the name. So, so I think we're going to be uh, knowing this is an important uh, video here. Uh, we'll use two strategies. Uh, so that should be uh, hopefully uh, helpful and enlightening uh, for you. Let's first look at two parabolas right quick. You have one that has a minimum and one that has a maximum. And if you highlight that beautiful vertex, you'll notice it's either going to be the smallest value or it's going to be the biggest value. It's the smallest or it's the biggest. It's the bottom of the valley or the top of the mountain. So we're going to take advantage of that first. Okay, so uh, here's the first method, which I think everyone should be able to do both of these. So let's look up here. If just having fun with numbers, if you just have fun with the numbers, you'll see that this has to always be positive, right? Because it's something squared, and something squared is always positive. So that's got to, it's got to be positive, uh, with one exception, which is that it could be zero. And so what it, that means for you is I want you to understand that the smallest value y could ever be is when this green rectangle is zero. Because the green rectangle is always going to be bigger than zero or zero. It'll never be negative. And so when it comes to finding the smallest possible value, it's going to be the value that makes the value of x that makes this green rectangle zero. And that's going to be 7, right? So x equals 7 is going to be the location of the vertex. So now the vertex is a coordinate point. It has an x and a y. So then what you want to do is you want to replace x with 7. So let's do that one together. All right, so let's go y is equal to, drum roll please. Ain't no drum roll, but that's not really my fault because there ain't anyone in here. So if there were people here, I promise you they would have done a brilliant and inspiring drum roll. Okay, so there we go. And we say y is equal to 7 by 7. That's zero, holler. Okay, so 0 plus 5. And you get y is equal to 5. Gorgeous. And you can kind of see... You made the green rectangle zero, because the green rectangle can never be negative. So what does that mean for us? It means that the vertex is located at 7 comma 5 for this particular problem. Beautiful, well done. Now you might be looking at this and be like, oh wait, seven, five, those numbers were already in the equation, right? So you can definitely start to speed this thing up. Uh, let's look at mathematical structure for a moment. This would be another way of doing it. Mathematical structure says the vertex is always in HK if your equation looks like this. Well, ours does look like that. So outside we have a one, right? We don't show the times one, but it's there. We don't show it, but I promise you it's there. Oh, I promise you. X take away, so we were gonna take away positive seven. So let's take away positive seven. And then we get plus five. All right, you ready for that? And so you can see if you just take advantage of mathematical structure by just looking at the problem that the vertex would have to be at 7, 5. Okay, so we're at 7 
and 5. And it's a minimum point because this green rectangle is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. It'll never go negative. So it's here. It's that smallest, smallest point. Let's try another one. All right, well, let's see what we got here. So uh, now we have x plus 9. Now, this is still going to be this scenario because, once again, this portion of our structure has to be positive because we're squaring something. And anytime you square a number, you get a positive value. And so we're going to have the same idea as you need to say, oh, okay. You need to say to yourself, oh, Okay, well, what value of x makes this zero? Because when this green rectangle is zero, that's going to be the smallest that y could ever be, which is going to be 2. Right? You see that? And so what you do then is you say, oh, well, x equals negative 9. And when x equals negative 9, y is going to be equal to 2. Yeah, you speed that up a little bit, right? And so the vertex is going to be at negative 9 and 2. All right. Uh, let's look over here with using mathematical structure. So you can look at this equation, and you, and you might write it. So let's write it over here. And we get uh, x, let's put a 1 out in front, x plus 9 squared plus uh, 2. Now, one of the things you might notice is I didn't go make that 9 red, did I? Oh, no, I did not. That is not red. That's black. Because that ain't a minus sign. That's a plus sign. That's a plus sign. And so the structure... A vertex form is a takeaway. It's x take away h. Because it's supposed to mean the value of x that makes this damn thing zero. Like here, 7 makes this zero. If you make that 9, this will be 18. And so as far as structure is concerned, you want to rewrite it so it has a minus. There you go. X. Now it's mathematical, but I have to do negative 9, right? Because it's take away a negative is the same as adding a positive. Okay, so now we've copied the structure of our problem up here with the minus sign. That's the take away sign. And so now H is negative 9 and K is 2. So we want to go I started spinning so much I thought I was dancing. I figured I might as well go with it. <laughs> Sometimes like just go with it. Just do it. Ain't no one gonna care. <laughs> it ain't like it ain't like anyone's gonna care. You know? If you stop what you're doing and you just be like and then you get back to it. I mean, I don't think I wasted that much time doing that. Uh, so there you go. So, you know, now students will get to a point, right? Where you'll just see the plus sign and you'll know it's negative. Uh, but remember, to use structure, your pluses and your minuses all got to be the same. Uh, over here, it's always going to be about the value that makes the squared thing zero. Okay, so here it was negative nine. Man, I really want to do one more. Do we got time for one more? Please tell me we do. Okay, we do, I think we do. All righty then. Um, I know you looking at that, you're like, Mr. Miller, oh my God, you done put a negative sign on that thing. You done went and did it. He done went and done it. Uh, don't worry, it's actually really, uh, not, it doesn't even change the complexity. Uh, watch, 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 watch. Because if we go back to our first analogy, that green rectangle 
still has to be positive. Has to be. But we're going to always negate it. So what it really means is that I knew I brought this orange marker for some reason. I barely ever use it, but I was like, I know I brought it for a reason. Here we go. That orange um, square has to always be negative. Because if the green is always positive, and we're gonna say take the opposite of the green, that means the orange is always negative. So the value of y is gonna continuously get smaller and smaller and smaller, more and more bigger, bigger negatives. So it's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like this. And so really, the biggest value Y will ever achieve in his whole life for this expression, his whole life, the biggest value it'll ever be is negative six. And that's going to happen when that is zero. <laughs> and that's going to happen when the green one is zero. And so again, Again, really it's about x equaling 5 is kind of when the proverbial magic is going to happen. And if you look here, we go this direction. And I'm going to put in that 5. Oh my God, is that not a beautiful thing? Tell me it's a beautiful thing. I need to know. <laughs> okay, I need to know. Uh, minus zero, right? But negative zero is just zero. No such thing as a negative zero. And you get minus six. So it turns out it's at five and negative six. Where's the green? Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? So it really ain't change a whole lot. But not about finding the vertex. It changes a lot about the shape. It means it's going to point down instead of pointing up. Uh, let's look at mathematical structure on this problem. So, let's put the minus, x take away, where's my rib, where's my rib? Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, but see, now that's a minus sign, right? So if I wrote a minus, I would keep it black because the structure is a plus sign. And so if I want to, actually know what k is, I need to be leading with a plus sign, not a minus sign. So what I'm going to do is instead of minusing a positive, I'm going to plus a negative. There you go. Now I'm using my mathematical structure. And you are feeling pretty good, I hope. And there you go. All right, and if you look back to here, notice A doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It doesn't matter. I thought it would matter. It doesn't matter. Because it's always H and K. Doesn't matter what A is, because really the, the money number here for X is gonna be what makes this zero. And then zero times, I don't care, still gonna be zero for the vertex. All right. Hey, I had a good time. I hope you did too. Remember, um, uh, be silly, be honest, and always trust your cape. <laughs> All right.